Hi, my name is Tassara Shelton, and I'm going to be reading a piece that I um, had published in the gorgeous Canadian literature magazine, Blank Spaces. This is my son, Tieran Reese, and his daughter, Clark Kristen Reese. I hope you don't mind that they're joining us. I'm not afraid of Kevin Reese. Don Mills, Ontario, home. I was 14 years old in my basement bedroom. Everyone else slept upstairs while I had freedom and privacy beneath them. I loved it down there. As the helpful oldest daughter in a family of eight, I got the basement bedroom as proof of my maturity. On this particular night, I was wide awake. I was, it was barely past midnight and I had a feeling I'd heard the doorbell ring. I wasn't afraid. I knew my stepdad would take care of the midnight visitor. He was strong, dangerous, and protective. But laying there, I didn't hear the familiar movement of family above. Strange. Again, I heard the doorbell ring. I'm not a brave person, nor am I strongly intuitive, but I somehow knew the visitor wanted to see me and I had no reason to feel afraid. Barefoot, I tiptoed out of my room and up the wooden steps which led to the front door of our home. I looked around uncomfortably for a moment, not afraid, but aware of the strangeness in the situation. I stood alone on the landing, breathing the cool air, listening for sounds of family and for any sounds outside the door. When I heard nothing, I raised myself on my toes to peek out of the peephole. When I saw who stood there, it made no sense. Kevin Reese was in juvenile prison. He and I weren't really friends. We'd spent one night several months before chatting on the swing set at a local park. Sure, we'd connected. We openly shared about deep, important, and intimate things. Sure, it felt different and dangerous. Back home, my best friend was phoning my mom and pleading with her to save me from that bad boy, Kevin Reese. But he wasn't bad. He was scared and defensive. He was new to our school, and his reputation preceding him had pushed boundaries so he wouldn't disappoint us, mimicking the pushing he received at home. He didn't change after that night on the swings, and we didn't become friends, but I wasn't afraid of him, and he was respectful of me. Now, though, he was in juvenile prison, so how could he also be looking at me? relaxed and almost relieved through my peephole. I didn't answer the door. Somehow I knew he didn't need me to. His look, even with that weird warping of the peephole, told me what he'd come to say. I ventured back down to my room and fell asleep. Don Mills, Ontario High School. The next morning at school was pandemonium. Whispers and gossip and tears. A car full of teenagers had escaped the juvenile prison the morning before. A high-speed car chase ensued, resulting in a crash. Everyone, including Kevin Reese, had died. Everyone, including Kevin Reese. I was in a state of shock. As I walked the halls of our high school, one of Kevin's friends, a girl who had her own bad reputation, motioned to me, inviting me to follow her into the bathroom. We found ourselves alone in a stall. Despite her acne and scowl, she was pretty. I found myself comparing our similar underneath it all physical appearance. Kevin talked about you often, she told me with uncharacteristic softness. You didn't judge him. You didn't point and talk about him. And you weren't afraid of him. Actually, she added. I was sometimes jealous because he said you were the only person who understood him. I was nodding confused and honored and lost in questions. I mumbled my appreciation, knowing it was a risk for her to be seen talking sweetly to me, indeed to be caught talking sweetly at all. Kevin Reese had come to my house that night, a ghost, relaxed and relieved. He wanted me to know and went out of his way to tell me he was okay. I didn't waste much time grieving the life he lived. Instead, I wondered often about the value of authentic kindnesses shared with strangers and silent friends. Kevin Reese claimed I had given him a gift that night on the swings, but he and his pretty friend had given me a much bigger gift. They had gone out of their way to see me, even when it was dangerous or impossible, even when Kevin was dead. I have been the giver and the receiver of similar, authentic and random kindnesses over the years. It's been both life-changing and easy. It's been easy because I am not afraid of Kevin Reese. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Thank you, guys.